Hello, and welcome to Wethersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian here. When I came in today, Library Bear was wearing three hats. I'm guessing that he wants to hear some stories about hats. And so we actually have three stories about missing hats. Who knew that this was such a popular topic? Our first story about missing hats is I Want My Hat Back. This is a story by John Classen. I want my hat back. My hat is gone. I want it back. Have you seen my hat? No, I haven't seen your hat. Okay, thank you anyway. This is a very polite hat seeker. Have you seen my hat? No, I have not seen any hats around here. Okay, thank you anyway. Have you seen my hat? No, why are you asking me? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any hats anywhere. I haven't seen, I would not steal a hat. Don't ask me any more questions. Okay, thank you anyway. Have you seen my hat? I haven't seen anything at all. I haven't seen anything all day. I have been trying to climb this rock. Would you like me to lift you up on top of it? Yes, please. Have you seen my hat? I saw a hat once. It was blue and round. My hat doesn't look like that. Thank you anyway. Have you seen my hat? What is a hat? Thank you anyway. Nobody has seen my hat. What if I never see it again? What if nobody ever finds it? My poor hat. I miss it so much. What's the matter? I have lost my hat and nobody has seen it. What does your hat look like? It is red and pointy and, wait a minute, didn't we see a red pointy hat before? I have seen my hat. <laughs> Who do you suppose he's running back to see? I wonder. You! You stole my hat! Now, that rabbit said he would never steal a hat, didn't he? Ooh, look at the expressions in their eyes. Hmm. I love my hat. Excuse me, have you seen a rabbit wearing a hat? No. Why are you asking me? I haven't seen him. I haven't seen any rabbits anywhere. I would not eat a rabbit. Don't ask me any more questions. Okay. Thank you anyway. Oh my goodness. Hmm. That is a rather interesting end to the story called I Want My Hat Back by John. Well, Bear, our next story about missing hats is called, Who Took the Farmer's Hat? 
This story is by Joan L. Nudist. The pictures are by Fritz Siebel. Who took the farmer's hat? The farmer had a hat, an old brown hat. Oh, how he liked that old brown hat. I know exactly how he feels. I have a hat that I love too. But the wind took it and away it went. The farmer ran fast, but the wind went faster. So the farmer had to look for it. He looked and he looked. My goodness, he certainly is looking. And he looked. No old brown hat. He saw Squirrel. Squirrel, did you see my old brown hat? Said the farmer. Sorry, these pages are a little bit hard to turn. No, said Squirrel. I saw a fat, round, brown bird in the sky, a bird with no wings. The farmer saw a mouse. Mouse, did you see my old brown hat? Said the farmer. No, said Mouse. I saw a big, round, brown mouse hole in the grass. I ran to it, but away it went. The farmer saw Fly. Fly, did you see my old brown hat? said the farmer. No said Fly. I saw a flat, round, brown hill. The hill was in a tree, and then that hill took off, and away it went. The farmer saw a goat. Goat, did you see my old brown hat? said the farmer. No, said Goat. I saw a funny round brown flower pot. I was going to eat it, but the wind took that flower pot away. The farmer saw Duck. Duck, did you see my old brown hat? said the farmer. No, said Duck. I saw a silly round brown boat, but Bird took that. The farmer saw Bird. Bird, did you take my old brown hat? said the farmer. said bird. 
I saw this nice round brown nest, but no hat. The farmer looked at the nest in the tree, a nice old round brown nest. There are all the animals looking, too. Bird was in it. And an egg was in it. Oh, my, said the farmer. What do you think will happen? Will the farmer take back his hat? Let's find out. Like it? Said Bird. I like it, said the farmer. Oh yes, I like that nice round brown nest. It looks a little like my old brown hat, but I see it is a nice round brown nest. Farmer has a new brown hat. Oh, how he likes that new brown hat. And how Bird likes that old brown nest. This book was Who Took the Farmer's Hat? The story is by Joan N. Nudist, and the pictures are by Fritz Siebel. Well, who did take the farmer's hat? I guess it was just the wind, and then Bird found it and thought it was a nest. Well, that's our second story about hats. I hope Library Bear is getting his fill of hats. Our last story about hats is one you're probably familiar with. This is called Caps for Sale. This is a tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. And this is told and illustrated by Esper Slobodkina. Caps for Sale. Caps for sale. Oh my, look at all of the caps on that peddler's head. Did you know a peddler is someone who walks from place to place to sell things? Once there was a peddler who sold caps, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First, he had on his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset the caps. That means to spill them. As he went along, he called caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, he said. And he walked out of town 
slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, thought he, and he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First, his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. They were all there, so he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. Do you see something different in this picture? Look carefully. What happened? But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. He looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree. No caps. Then he looked up in the tree. And what do you think he saw? Make a prediction. All right, let's turn the page and see if you were right. <clears throat> on every branch sat a monkey. <clears throat> Excuse me, on every monkey was a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cap. <clears throat> Excuse me. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. This made the peddler angry, so he shook both hands at them and said, You monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook both their hands back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot. You monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, tsu, tsu, tsu. By this time, the peddler was really very, very angry. He stamped both his feet and shouted, You monkeys, you! You must give me back my caps! But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, tsu, tsu, tsu. At last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground, and began to walk away. What do you think is going to happen? Let's see if you're right. But then each monkey pulled off his cap and all the gray caps and all the brown caps and all the blue caps and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First, his own checked cap, then the gray caps, 
then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, Caps! Caps for sale! 50 cents a cap! <laughs> That's the end of that story. Caps for sale. A tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. This story was told and illustrated by S. Fursal Budkina. Well, I hope you enjoyed our three stories about hats. Even though the library is open again, we're still going to do story time this way for a bit. So you'll be seeing more of Library Bear, but he's going to be hiding out during the day. And you won't see him when you come to the library, only on the story time videos. This was Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian at the Weathersfield Proctor Library. I hope you join us next time for story time. Goodbye.